Hello, Andy. Their fans, Michael O'Sullivan, sitting down with head coach Russ Turner of the UC Irvine men's basketball team as we preview another campaign coach, 2016-17. We were just talking about summer goes fast, as yeah. always, but the schedule coming out, and let's delve right into it because we've got a lot to get to, and uh, it'll start off mid-November, as always. Big opening weekend here at the Bren, Utah State, South Dakota State, two teams that you're not only familiar with, but... No strangers to the tournament in recent years, and that's a big opening weekend for the fans in your team. Yeah, we're excited to have two opponents of that high quality the first weekend of the season. What I'm hoping is we can get great crowds in the Bren right. um, to support this young team because we're going to need to play well in order to win those games, but we need to get some wins in those games because our schedule overall is so tough. So it should be a fun way to open the season for both our players and our fans. Yeah, and then you got Pacific also coming in here very early in the season. Just before that, though, you make a trip to Cal. So, I mean, really, not a lot of time for your team to shake off the rust in these early games. I mean, you guys will have to execute to pick up some wins. <laughs> yeah, we're going to throw these young fellows to the fire. And, right. uh, you know, our fans, I think, will really enjoy that early schedule with a couple of teams that used to be part of the Big West. Um, that we get to play now in the non-conference portion of the schedule. I know our players will be excited to, you know, put pit themselves against a Pac-10 foe in Cal, and you know those games are all ones that I think people around here will be able to see. So we're excited for them. Yeah, and then you'll have a tournament in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, over the Thanksgiving holiday. And yeah. you did the Thanksgiving Day tournament last year, but you stayed local. You obviously travel for that, and good mid-major opponents there as well. Yeah, we're able to play South Dakota State a couple times because of that tournament. And um, the arena we're playing in, the Pentagon in Sioux Falls, is supposed to be an outstanding place to play basketball. They love the game there in South Dakota. I don't know how many fans we're going to have traveling with us, but those are three really tough games for us. You know, 50-50 type games, all of them, that are going to be important for, for us to to play well in. Um, we'll see. It's a, it's a little bit of an intimidating schedule in some ways when you think of the youth of our team, but I'm excited to see how we fare in those games. Yeah, literally one of the last days of that opening month at Santa Clara on the road, and you know the calendar flips to December. You talked about throwing these young guys to the fire. You do that in December like you did a year ago, a pretty rigorous road stretch to start that month, and it includes at Arizona, a spot you went to a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't really have a choice right now with um, the record we've had over the past few years about playing a tough schedule. We right. can't get uh, teams that aren't tough teams to play us, really. Uh, but yeah, you're right. We're going to go on the road and face some quality opponents. You know, Arizona and St. Mary's in that stretch, I think both will be top 25 teams playing Santa Clara. Uh, WCC team with a, a new coach, a really accomplished coach, and uh, Herb Sendek will be an interesting challenge. You know, we beat them here last year, right. so uh, they're looking to pay us back on that one. You know, there aren't any easy games for us, and uh, that's the way it should be. I think that's good for fans. I think that that will really uh, expose us in a lot of areas. Hopefully, that should be able to make us better for when we open our conference play because uh, we're, we're aiming at the top of the conference again. A lot of quality opponents in this non-conference slate, no question. You mentioned St. Mary's. You've had a, a couple tough battles with them in Moraga the last few seasons. Nevada. At Don Haskins Sun Bowl, also on the schedule as well, a tournament you won a year ago, right near the uh, winter break. Um, but let's talk about the Big West Conference now. Yes, as we, I mean, it's hard to gloss over the Nevada game right, on the road. That's right. a, that's an excellent team. You know, they won they won the uh, CBI last year, I think. I mean, it, you know, had a lot of success in the postseason. Um, yeah, and then the opportunity to potentially play UTEP on the road. Right. We play at New Mexico State. I mean, those are really difficult games uh, for a program like ours. And I'm excited to see what we can do with them. Um, as I talk about it sometimes, I'm trying to add up where the wins are going to come. Yeah. And it's not easy to do that. We're going to have to play really well. Non-conference schedule, tough as always. As you said, not really much of a choice with you know the 20-plus win seasons the last several years. And talk about the Big West. Hawaii a year ago, very impressive. They proved they were the best team in the conference. Uh, they had the postseason ban this year, of course. But looking at this conference, kind of the landscape of the league, what are you looking for? Well, I think that there'll be a number of teams that can win it. I think um, what folks will say is that Long Beach is clearly the favorite based on uh, what they have returning and uh, some of the players that they've had sitting out who are proven players at this level. But I don't think there's a team that we won't be able to beat if we play well. Um, I will have really high expectations for this team. I think that's uh, part of what we've established with this program. I don't know what others will think of us because we're young and uh, in some cases, and 
and key spots were unproven, but I do think we're talented. And uh, I do think that we'll have a unified team that uh, plays unselfishly and competes on the defensive end. So I think we're going to have a chance when, when it all is said and done. Yeah, when you talk about this team, you know, we've, we've talked at length about the senior class you lost from a year ago, losing some points, some leadership defense there for sure. But you'll have three seniors this season. I know you'll expect a lot out of, you know, headed by Luke Nelson, who's shown he's an all-league player since he's got here. Yeah, we'd like to think that Luke can be one of the best players, if not the best player in the conference this season. And uh, I always feel like the team's success will be dictated by the seniors and, and how they both perform and set the tone uh, within the team. So that won't change this year. But in our junior class, we don't have any players now. So there's a lot of excitement in the two classes below them. Guys are really going to compete for roles in this program. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how all that goes because there's a lot of different guys who have the potential to emerge. Also, not only looking at your roster, but your coaching staff. I mean, there was a lot of turnover yeah. uh, after the end of last season and this summer, and you brought in you know, a couple new guys to sit on the bench with you, including a couple of past head coaches. Yeah, we have. Um, you know, the guys who left here left a great mark on this program. Of you course. know, Ali Tan, Nick Booker, Ryan Schlake. It's hard to replace those guys, uh, just as it's hard for our players to replace the guys who've, who've left. But I do like the guys that we've hired. I think that uh, they're very talented. They're obviously hungry and motivated, a lot like the players are, as I said. But, uh, you know, bringing in Blaine Taylor, um, I've joked and said he's going to be the winningest coach in the conference, and he's my assistant. Um, he's got 380 Division I wins. That's incredible experience for me to draw from. Um, and I've worked with Blaine, so right. I know what he does as an assistant, and he's a great combination for my personality because he's so easy to laugh, and uh, he brings a lighter tone to the way you know we operate every day around here, so that's good. Um, elevating Mike Wilder, I think, is a, is a great opportunity for him and is really important for our program. You know, He played in this program for me, graduated from here, is incredibly popular still in this community, and uh, there's a lot that he adds, and uh, he's right. going to have to develop himself into you know, the recruiter that I know he'll become, uh, but he'll do that. He's already in the process of doing that. And then the two young guys, the uh, two administration guys that I've, I've brought on, James Blake, as you mentioned, was a head coach before. And uh, some people remember when we played his team from Fr Simon Frazier, but he's also right. won a championship in this league as an assistant coach with Northridge. And then I hired Pat Flesher from uh, UNC Greensboro. And Pat's a more of a local product in some ways. He grew up in Oklahoma, but he went to Pepperdine. So uh, being affiliated there, uh, seeing something different in the East Coast at a school like ours, and then coming here, I think he, he brings a lot of experience and expertise to our staff too. Well, an exciting new look, I mean, on the roster and on the coaching staff, but as you said, you know, you expect a lot from this team and it, it's hard to skip over any of these non-conference games. It's a loaded schedule. Should be a lot of uh, excitement in 2016-17. Coach, thanks a lot for taking some time with us. We'll, we'll tip it off in November. Thanks, Michael. See you next time, Anteater fans.